wir haben ja letztens den, den Lawrence geguckt. Und der Lawrence, ich habe ja noch nie was mit einem Bassshaker zu tun gehabt. Und Lawrence hat sich gestern so viel Mühe gegeben mit seinen ähm, besonderen Shots, die er getätigt hat, in der Garage und äh, anderen Orten. Ich möchte mir von Lawrence jetzt gerne nochmal ansehen, wie er mir den äh, Bassshaker näher bringt. Ich habe bis jetzt immer nur von Bassshakern gehört, aber ich habe noch nie wirklich verstanden, was das Ding überhaupt macht, außer Bum Bum. Und das lasse ich mir jetzt mal von Lawrence erklären. Exit, ich grüße dich, hallo, was geht? I answer sim racing questions every single day. People ask me for upgrade advice all the time and my advice rarely changes. Number one, get decent breaks. Number two, get a solid seating position or rig. <lacht> Fuck, Alter. Oft. <lacht> äh, okay. Lawrence ist halt aber auch einfach ein Kreativer. Da sind sie wieder. Die Shots mitten. Ey, ohne Scheiß. Das ist halt Lawrence, finde ich persönlich jetzt. Nach dem zweiten Video, das ist, glaube ich, sein Signature-Move. And three, invest in haptic feedback. And when it comes to the latter, few brands are as synonymous with the entire category of sim racing equipment as Bud Kicker. The difference they make to your sim racing is even bigger than upgrading your wheelbase. This is going to be a good one. Echt? Let's go. Nee. Ist das wirklich so, dass ein Buttkicker mehr ausmacht als eine als die Wheelbase? Oh. Das ist meine Ansage. Introduction. On the left, you see all the sections in this video. Ich finde das cool, dass er äh, so das aufgegliedert hat. Vielleicht sollten wir das auch mal machen. Oh. I've put timestamp links to each section in the description below. <lacht> While you're down there, please hit the thumbs up button to help YouTube suggest this video to others like you. 70% of the people. Oh, er hat den krassen Shifter Chat. Oh, er hat den ganz krassen Shifter. People who watch my videos are not subscribed to the channel. Please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified about upcoming reviews. Let me kick this off by giving you a brief explanation. Moment, wir haben das Nummernschild gesehen. You... Oh, IRL, Junge. Irland. Ah ja. Kick this off by giving you a brief explanation. In Irland filmt man auf der Straße. Explanation of what haptic feedback actually is. It's basically a rumble motor which is connected to your game. When you shift gears, you feel a clunk through your rig. When your engine revs, you feel it in the seat of your pants. Oh, da stelle ich mir ein iRacing geil vor, weil ich finde jetzt schon das Schalten, also man hört richtig die Gearbox. Oh, das stelle ich mir wirklich gut vor. When you kick it up a notch, you can tune it to tell you that you're losing front or rear grip. Oh. And you can even buy multiples for an absolutely incredible experience to identify which corner of the... Ey, hör mir, also ich muss es jetzt sagen, auch wenn es jetzt in der Reaction drin ist, hör mir auf mit Hintern Tepper. Ich habe gerade aktuell auf meiner rechten Arschpacke einen scheiß Pickel und es ist genau die Stelle, wo du sitzt im Rig drauf. Und das ist echt die Hölle. So, jetzt ist es raus. Ich habe heute den ganzen Tag mit mir gehadert, ob ich euch diese Geschichte erzähle. Aber jetzt ist es raus. The car, the Fuck! Is coming from. Even though Butt Kicker uses audio signals to cause the vibrations and shakes, the signals are specialized signals which have nothing to do with the game audio that you hear through your headphones or speakers. I'll cover that in more detail later. Butt Kicker made its mark on sim racing with the Butt Kicker Gamer 2, which I reviewed a few years back. We uh -huh. even gave one away to a lucky subscriber. While I will be giving you all the positives and negatives I've experienced with this product, it must be said that I'm already a huge fan of this type of device. And if you can afford to buy one, you should. Was Or you should at least get something similar. Aber das wird I'll explain sein. alternatives in a dedicated section. In short, these devices work with amplifiers, a little hm. like a bass speaker would. They're even usually attached using audio cables via a sound card on your PC. Except they're not attached to a cone or a speaker, so they don't make as much noise as a speaker. Okay. But do bear in mind that these things can make noise. I'll cover that in a later section too. <laughs> Lawrence, ich bin, uh, hey Lawrence, uh, greetings from Germany. I'm a very big fan of your uh, B-roll. I love it. I love it. And Lidl is a very, very great place to get food. To make this review special, Butt Kicker worked. Benutzt die Krähe gerade wirklich den Übergang? Keen to get me to try their new proprietary. <lacht> Was ist das? Proprietary software, as well as experiencing not one but two of their Butt Kicker Gamer Plus devices, one for the front of the rig and one for the rear. 
all of the products in this review were sent to me free of charge for the purposes of this review and nobody other than me has had a say in the content of this video. Mm. The links to this product and its competitors in the description are affiliate links and if used will earn this channel some money at no extra cost to you. First impressions. My first impressions of this product were filled with expectation. Having owned a butt kicker gamer 2 for the past 3 years, I needed to find out everything I could about this new iteration of the product. Visually, there's less colour on show, but the visuals don't really matter here. The mount is shorter and you also get some bolt holes which are nicely spaced so you can fit this pretty much to any rig. It would be really what? nice if the clamp or mounting holes were removable as they can make installation awkward and they never need to both be used at the same time. The thing that struck me most is that they now have USB-C connectivity. As explained in the introduction, oh. usually you need to use a dedicated sound card. Oh, das ist geil, weil das mit der Soundcard würde mich richtig stören. Ui. Wir haben auch noch USB Slots frei. Hmm. And audio cables for this type of device. Gitammer, the company who makes butt kicker devices, is trying to innovate to make the process as simple as possible. Less cables, and they sell this kit complete, so you don't need to mix and match to build a DIY solution. Now with their own software, you don't even need to set much up. They've definitely made this appeal to people who want to spend more time driving and Ooh. less time tinkering. That's really cool. Price. This isn't a cheap accessory, unfortunately. <gasps> it Ui. requires an amp, loads of long cables, and of course the butt kicker itself. I've included a link in the description as it does seem that buying direct is the best option at 279 US dollars. It also seems that that website is heavily aimed at the USA. I've included a list of resellers from around the world. Please comment with your experience and Ooh. recommendations for resellers in the comments. But please be aware that if you want the Haptic Connect software, you get it for free when buying direct. It doesn't seem to be included via most resellers, and reseller prices seem a lot higher. Some websites quote pricing including taxes, others exclude it. With the older butt kicker product, I remember that the 230 volt version of the hardware was up to 30% more expensive than the American 110 volt version. Ooh. That seems to still be the case. Do shop around, but be very aware that you are buying the right voltage version for uh. your country. Installation, hardware. There are quite a few parts in this kit, and I had two of them. Firstly, you need space for an amp. Each amp needs a power cable. Each amp also needs a USB-C port or an audio cable attached. <clears throat> and of course, lastly, you need to hook up the butt kickers themselves. So do prepare yourself for quite a few cables. As ich some people are like... Maga, die B-Roll Lawrence ist einfach eine 10 von 10. Ich liebe es. Und ich habe mir immer Sorgen gemacht, dass ich mir ein Studio bauen muss. Aber weißt du was? Ich lege es einfach draußen auf dem Parkplatz neben meinen Oki und mache einfach ein Bild. Dann. ...to have multiple devices, I'd love to see some way to daisy chain them so that you require less cables. If you were to buy four of these, you need four power cables, four audio sources, four USB ports, and of course, four cables running to your butt kickers themselves. I did try to minimize power cables with one of these split kettle leads, and it works great. Oh. I'll include an Amazon link for that product in the description. The cable which goes into the transducers is not detachable on the transducer side, so be careful when installing. I pulled this one away slightly and it looks kind of broken but it still works fine. It's hard to get it back into its original position. The amps themselves are a step up from the butt kicker Gamer 2's amps. They have plenty of power for my needs and they also seem a lot more intelligent when hooked up in USB mode. I'll cover oh. the different connection types in the next sections. Okay, nice. With the old model, you got a wired inline remote, which was clunky, but it did mean that your amps didn't need to be within line of sight in order to adjust the setting. I have my amps hidden on a PC shelf behind my rig, so the wireless infrared remote is a little useless to me. I still don't really tend to use them because all the remotes work all of the amps. This is just something to consider. However, it's definitely worth pointing out that once I found the settings that worked for me, I only ever needed to worry about the amps being switched on and have not needed the remotes for anything else. Usually they would automatically turn on with my PC, but sometimes I would find that I'd start racing and they hadn't turned on yet. That was a bit frustrating. The amps do turn off when idle, which is also great. However, when they're powered off, they emit a high pitched whine, which I never noticed from the old model. It's not a huge Ooh. issue, but if you have sensitive ears, it can be distracting. Mounting is pretty simple. 
There's a versatile. Du, Maga, das ist uh, hier in dem Raum hörst du nicht. Keine Sorge. A clamp, which easily clamps to round bars or narrow aluminium profile tightly. You can also use the three bolt holes to mount directly onto most rigs. Mounting these devices is easy, although you really need to mount them as close to your body as possible to get the most out of them. Again, I'll cover that in more detail later in the review. Installation via sound card. <coughs> As said, this device uses audio signals and an amp to transmit tactile feedback. These audio signals are not the same as what you hear in your headphones or speakers. They're dedicated sound output from your SimHub, iRacing or other software. If you want to use SimHub or iRacing or other software which powers tactile... What? Das kann man alles... Oh my god. Ich wusste ja gar nicht, dass das so mächtig ist. Transducers via sound cards, this section is for you. If you want the simpler USB-C installation info, just skip to the next section. Many people instantly think that they need to invest in an extra sound card to feed a butt kicker device. Ooh. What they don't consider is that your PC usually comes with at least two sound cards pre-installed. One on your motherboard and another one on your front audio port. If you find yourself needing more audio ports, even a simple, cheap sound card will do the trick. <laughs> Me. <laughs> The audio signal for your butt kicker does not need to be too precise, so don't buy an expensive sound card. Using SimHub, you can enable the audio devices which you have connected your butt kicker amps to. Oh. I did a video on this before and I've... Hey, SimHub is really so a mächtiges Programm, ne? Oof. ...linked in the description, so I will not be going into more detail on that in this review. Please note that SimHub, although free, may not be the ideal solution for someone who uses iRacing exclusively. If you mainly race iRacing, and don't want to have yet another app open on your PC, I highly recommend using iRacing's own haptic configurations in-game. They work really well and are more intuitive to set up than those in SimHub. Installation via USB-C Installation via USB-C eliminates the need for sound cards. Again, I'd love if you could daisy-chain them, as I now have lost two invaluable USB ports on my PC, even though they both serve almost the exact same purpose. The Haptic Connect software is pretty decent though. Make sure that the correct software bundle is included with your hardware, otherwise you're going to have to fork out extra money just to get the USB-C to work. The USB-C okay. connection feels a little more polished than installation via audio cables. Part of the reason this review took so long is because I wanted to spend a long time with both configurations. All the sims... Maga, du hast so eine ganz kleine... Also ich mag ja wirklich meine, meine Tau-Sachen, ne? Aber... So ein bisschen kleiner? Ui. ...that I use were supported, which is great. The app automatically knows which mm. one of them is running, and it was a largely seamless experience other than what I mentioned about sometimes needing to manually switch on the amps. However, I'm going to switch back to using SimHub for one major reason. Right now, it's impossible to differentiate the front and rear or the left and right signals in HaptiConnect. Okay. That really counteracts the very thing that makes this device so potent. So, if you want to feel your front wheels locking up via your front butt kicker and not the rear one, you currently can't set that up using Haptic Connect, but you can with SimHub. Please, butt kicker, we need this functionality. How it feels. Haptic feedback is immense. Controversially, in my previous butt kicker Gamer 2 review, I said that it was a better investment than motion. Even though my channel was very small at the time, I got quite some backlash from companies who make motion systems and people who own motion systems who told me that my words were ill-informed and harmful. Here we are three years later and I'm reiterating the same point. Yes, butt kickers are expensive, but they're so much better an investment than a motion system and they give you some of the feelings of motion. I know that sounds odd, but hear me out. When you feel the revs of the engine and the change of the gear shift, the indication of the sensation of understeer or oversteer, it's just a lovely feeling. Müssen wir der ganzen Sache jetzt auf den Grund gehen? We simulate ja. racing to trick our brains into thinking even just for a second that what we're experiencing is really happening. This product does that so well. I cannot stress how highly I recommend this product. Things to consider. Hmm. While this product oozes benefits and realism, it does have some shortcomings. Firstly, and probably most importantly, these things can get noisy. To be specific, they can cause things around them to become noisy with vibrations and reverberation. If installed correctly, they don't actually need to be run on high settings to start getting benefit from them. But 
If you want that real simulation experience, you've got some new variables to contend with, namely vibrations in other parts of your rig, like that T-slot nut you were too lazy to remove. That might start rattling every time you go over 7000 RPM all of a sudden. That's not your main worry though. If you live in an apartment or share a house with people, this product probably isn't for you. Those vibrations travel far. Huh? There are ways to isolate the vibrations with rubber, but none of those isolation solutions are provided natively with this product. I do have some advice for mounting though. Firstly, if you have one of these, mount it as close to your seat as possible. I recommend mounting to a seat rail or even drilling into the seat itself if possible. That's how you get the most bang for your buck. That's not really an option for most, and I didn't do it either this time. If you mount directly to your aluminium profile, you're going to greatly reduce the ability to feel the outputs and subtleties from these devices. Your rig is built to be as rigid as possible, which means that the whole thing turns into a conductor of the vibrations. If you have your rig in an isolated area where noises and vibrations are not an issue, then noise isn't a concern for you. But most of us Ach, noise, schmoiz, noise, schmoiz, alles. have other people living in our house who may not be as passionate about our immersion as we are. It's worth noting, as you're likely to see in the comments, that some people have had issues with failing amplifiers <laughs> with Butt Kicker Gamer too. That's a different product though as far as I'm concerned. This seems to be a vastly different product. I can only review the product in front of me and another reason for this review taking quite some time is that I tried my best to break this amp. I'd rather be safe than sorry. I know my opinion matters to you all so I didn't want this to be a half-baked attempt at a review. Alternatives There are some alternatives to this product but I'm a simple creature who loves a relatively plug and play solution. There are companies who do haptic feedback devices which attach directly to your pedals. I would recommend those above a butt kicker for your pedals as they're almost touching your feet. If you want to play with custom amps and pucks as they call them, there are also loads of options as this is all sound based and quite easy to interface with the likes of Simhub. It's not a complex DIY project to do and it's considerably cheaper. Although the products in this review were sent to me for free, it's worth noting that I bought my first butt kicker before I started my channel and have since rejected more DIY style setup reviews from similar companies as they simply have too many cables, more awkward amps and a less polished solution than this butt kicker. There will be people in the comments who are welcome to give their DIY setup recommendations and many of them will prefer their solution to this one. My job here is to educate about these products. But my personal decision was simple. I just bought a single butt kicker a few years ago and it was life changing. That's no exaggeration. We were driving the junior Janettas in a community league at the time and my Logitech G27 simply couldn't tell me when the rear was breaking loose. My butt kicker kept me informed as the rear was threatening to come loose and it was an absolute revelation. I went from a mid-pack driver to a podium challenger overnight. It was one of the reasons I got into reviewing hardware. It was that good. Final thought. That's a lot of detail about such a visually stationary product. There's a lot to digest. It's rare that I review a sim racing product where the aesthetics don't really matter that much. While mounting and noise are still the biggest challenges you're likely to face with this product, the rewards are worth the effort. The product's ability to trick you into thinking that you're really in a race car is up there with the best high-end sim racing hardware. While at first I was reluctant to try the haptic connect software, I couldn't help but acknowledge the massive benefits that it had. It was simple to set up and using USB cables instead of audio cables is far tidier. Unfortunately, it does mean that I need to run an extra piece of software while I'm racing. Their haptic connect software also cannot target a specific butt kicker. So all butt kickers connected to your machine react to the same thing. So you don't know if the feedback is coming from the front or the rear or the left or the right and for some, that's a deal breaker when it comes to using Haptic Connect. Luckily though, as mentioned, Simhub's amazing capabilities and iRacing's native solution for haptic feedback do offer those features and make this product very suitable to everyone who's in the market. I will stress that it's worth taking the time to play with the settings of this device. Ich gucke gerade, also ich lasse das gerade mal auf mich wirken und stelle gerade fest, dass ich wirklich kein guter Reviewer bin. Also, was Bildmaterial angeht. 
some effects that you may not need at all. Das müssen wir, das müssen wir besser machen. In, in fact, if you try to send too much info to the bot kicker devices, you will end up clipping, which is the point at which any additional information or nuances in the haptic feedback get lost because there's too much going on. In my view, this product is worth it for the gear shift feedback alone. As I mentioned, mount this device as close to your body as possible. That means close to or attached to your seat, seat rail or seat mount, and as close to your pedals or pedal tray as possible. As with any devices that provide physical feedback, the more you try to get out of the butt kicker Gamer Plus, the more noise and vibration your setup will create. We have several brands here in Ireland which are synonymous with their function. For example, most people in Ireland call 4x4s a Jeep, even though Jeeps are one of the least common cars on the road here. Vacuum cleaners are all called Hoovers, countertop grills are all called George Foremans, and in sim racing, haptic transducers like this one are often all called butt kickers, as it's an easy term to describe what they do. <laughs> Trust me when I say that you will love this product. Oh, there are yeah. cheaper ways to achieve similar end results for sure, but butt kicker is just making it easier and easier to enjoy this type of product. Should you decide to buy this product, I've included links in the description which when used, earn some money for this channel. There's no obligation to do so, but your support is appreciated. Das ist halt schon eine stramme Ansage, die er hier tätig Details gerade. about other companies with similar benefits are also listed. I'm Lawrence, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 9pm UK and Irish time. Thanks again to Bud Kicker for making this review possible and to you for taking the time to watch, hit the thumbs up or comment with your experiences or opinions. I'm Lawrence and I'll chat to you later. Ich muss mal ganz kurz auf eine Internetseite, die sich äh, Simray Shop nennt, um zu gucken, ob es dort äh, Butt Kicker zu kaufen gibt. Hm, es gibt einen Butt Kicker bei Simray Shop. Aha. Also das ist halt schon wirklich ein sehr, äh, sehr krasser Claim, dass das wirklich so ein Ding ist.